reflecting the glory of God in all we do with love. Good morning, family, and welcome to the Greater Worship Experience. Each week, you can view our broadcasts on live stream, YouTube Live, and Facebook Live platforms. joining us and be blessed. The greater worship experience will begin in 20 seconds. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Praise you, Lord God. Come on, can you love on him today? Can you love on him today? Wherever you are, can you begin to love on Jesus? Can you begin to love on Jesus? Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how thankful you are that he first loves you. Oh, in elementary. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Amen, amen, amen. We invite you to this worship experience. We can love on Jesus. When we think about the things he's done for us, we can't do anything but show him love, yeah? yeah.
somebody in here today Hallelujah. that can say, Pastor, I'll never forget what he's done for me. I'll never forget how he set me free. I'll never forget how he saved my soul. I'll never forget how he healed me, how he delivered me. I'll never forget how he's never left my side. I'll, I'll never forget how he's kept me and how he's blessed me. Is there anybody in here today that can testify that if I don't have anything else, I have a memory and I'll never forget where God has brought me from because he's brought me a mighty long way. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. And maybe there's somebody here today that can testify with me that sometimes just riding down the street in the car and, and all of a sudden a flashback comes back of how God's kept you and how he's blessed you and you just got to throw your hands up and say, God, thank you for keeping me and thank you for blessing me. Oh, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The Lord is in this holy temple. And all the earth keeps silent before him. God will never forget how you saved our soul. Never forget all the wonderful things that you've done in our life. And because we'll never forget, we've gathered today to worship you in spirit and in truth. So now God be with us in our worship experience this morning, both in person and virtually. Turn each living room, dining room, kitchen table, cubicle, hospital bed into a sanctuary. And then fill that place with your presence. Be with us now as we worship you and you alone. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. I was very deeply stained within and I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the water, he lifted me. Now safe am I. You may ask the question, what lifted you, pastor? Love lifted me. That when nothing else could help, it was love that lifted me. Let us sing to the glory of God.
else was able to help. Up and out. I have a testimony <laughs> that it was love that lifted me. Scripture this morning found in the book of Psalm, the 20th Psalm, Psalm 20, in its entirety, the word of the Lord reads, may the Lord answer you in the day of your trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation in the name of our God. Set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed and he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's prayer time. This morning, saints of God, there's something powerful about prayer. Something powerful about knowing that God would listen to us. Something powerful about that, that when we slip and fall, mess up, make mistakes, when others have stopped answering our phone calls, not responding to us any longer, you know God doesn't hold any of that against us. That God loves us enough to listen and to answer when we call. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that God still hears me when I pray. And we serve a God that still answers. And for that, I'm grateful. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear now my humble cry. And while on others thou art calling, please, Lord, do not pass me by. O most merciful and wise God, the one who sits high and looks low. The one who has his finger on the pulse of the world. The one who looks beyond our faults, our failures, our frailties, and still sees our needs. It's to you that we come this morning, God, first to say thank you. Thank you for just being God. Thank you for being almighty God. Thank you for being awesome God. Thank you for being powerful God. Thank you for being provider God. Thank you for being healing God. Thank you for being a God that we can always turn to. And know that you're a God that has promised that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for being a promise keeper. Thank you for keeping your promises from generation to generation to generation, God. I just want to say thank you. 
I want to thank you, dear God, because you brought us through another weekend. And for that, God, we say thank you, God. We, we thank you, dear God, for all of the hills and valleys of last week. And, and God, we come to this first day of a new week, dear God, with new expectation, new anticipation, new mercy, new anointing, saying to you, God, thank you for bringing us this far by faith. Thank you, dear God, for providing food on tables, clothes on backs, vehicles to drive in. God, thank you that even when everything seems to be rising in prices, you're still providing for our tables. God, thank you. Thank you for watching over our family, both day and night. As they travel up down highways and roadways and railways and and even on the subway, God, we thank you for them, your protection over them. But God, we need you. We need you, dear God, because there's wars and rumors of wars. We need you, dear God, to, to send peace in this land, God. Send peace in the world, dear God, that, that, that you might let people know that you are still in control. We need you, dear God, in our homes. We need you in our schools. We need you in our church. We need you in our community, God. We need you, God. We can't make it without you. So God, won't you be with us? Won't you be with us as, as we move towards the place that you have for us? And then God, somebody under the sound of my voice is sitting and standing at the road of of confusion and confliction, God. They're, they're at the crossroads of life and they don't know which way to go. God, won't you take them by the hand and, and lead them and guide them to the place that you have designed just for them. Then God, somebody else is on their bed of affliction this morning and they need you to just pass by so they can reach out and touch the hem of your garment. Somebody needs you this morning, dear God. Somebody in the nursing home Somebody in their living room, somebody in their dining room, somebody sitting at their kitchen table, somebody needs you this morning, dear God. Would you touch like you've never touched before? Let somebody know that even right now somebody's praying for them. Be with doctors and nurses who every day put their life on, on a line. So God, be with them and strengthen them. Then God, let us never forget that if it had not been for you who was on our side, we don't know where we would be, but thank you for never leaving our side. So God, I pray that you touch the sick, touch the shut-in. Every name on our prayer list, God, won't you touch them this morning? And then God, hear us when we cry. And then answer by and by. So God, thank you for hearing us again this morning. We're imperfect, but thank you. We've made mistakes, but thank you for listening. And God, we ask your forgiveness in our lives for the sin that we've committed by thought, word, and deed. And then God, if there's anything that my feeble and forgetful mind has failed to ask you for, Please don't fail to deliver, but hear now the prayers and petitions of these, your people, and grant them to be so. For this I pray in the only name that matters, in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. And amen.
Don't be afraid to open your mouth and just say, God, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you because you first love me. I love you because even when people walk away from me, you still love me, God. I love you. I love you. I love you this morning, God, because you are the great I am. I love you, God. From the very bottom of my heart, I say to you this morning that I love you. I love you, God. I love you. I love you. I love you. Come on, tell God you love him. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just tell him. God, I really love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. Hey, God, I love you. Hey. I really, 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 really love you. Is there anybody here? I can tell God I love you. Yes, I love you. From the bottom of my heart, God, I love you. I, love you. I really, 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 really love you.
really, 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 really love you, God. You've been my doctor in my sick room. You've been a friend that sticks closer than any brother for everything I needed you to be. You, you've been that. You've been my provider. You've been my healer. You've been my deliverer. You've been my keeper. You've been, you've been. You're the great. the Lord put your hands together come on give him 30 seconds of the best hand clap you can give him just to tell him God I love you I really 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 love you I love you God I really love you Because you are the great I am. We welcome you this morning to the greater worship experience here at the greater Centennial Amy Zion Church in the great city of Mount Vernon, New York. And we're just so grateful and thankful that you decided to come and worship with us this morning. If this is your first time worshiping with us virtually or in person, uh, we want to welcome you to our worship experience this morning. And we want you to know that God loves you. And so do I. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Amen. And so we're just so grateful and thankful that you're with us this morning. Uh, we do solicit your prayers for those whose hearts are heavy because of the loss of a loved one. We ask that you will continue to pray for the family of Sister Mary Matthews who went on to be with the Lord. Her funeral was this past Friday, so we ask that you continue to keep her family in your prayers. We also ask that you would pray for Sister Wendy Clark who lost a nephew. And we ask that you would keep them in your prayers as well. We also ask that you pray for our sick and our shut-in, those who are in a season of bereavement. Amen. We ask that you would continue to pray uh, for them. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements for you this morning. Uh, for uh, We're preparing for our Harriet Tubman Awards in March. Nomination forms are due today. You can go uh, on our website if you want to nominate somebody uh, for the Harriet Tubman Award. Amen. Amen. Uh, please join us this morning for Sunday school. Uh, they'll have that black history moment today at 11 a.m. You can get the meeting ID on our website so you can come and encourage our children as they have been working hard putting these presentations together and we want to support them. Amen. 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 Um, just this past week, uh, Governor Hochul has dropped the mask mandate uh, and we're not dropping it in here. Amen. We're going to keep our mask on. Amen. Um, because uh, some people may be through with COVID, but COVID is not through with us. And so we want to make sure we continue to stay healthy, continue to stay safe. And we want you to be prepared uh, tomorrow, uh, beginning at 10 o'clock until supplies, while supplies last, uh, we have COVID PPE kits to give away. Included in that kit is two home test kits. Uh, mask and hand sanitizer. Uh, so you get the two home test kits, mask and hand sanitizer. You come by the office beginning at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I think we have about 200 of them, the first 200. Yes, you need to be present to get it. Amen. Uh, so you need to get present to get it. We're going to get some more in, but right now we have 200. We want to be able to give those uh, to those who need it. Amen. It's better to know than not to know. Amen. Amen. So if you need, you know someone who needs a, a test kit and the sanitizer and the mask, come on by to church tomorrow beginning at 10 o'clock. 
I hope you have been joining us every Thursday at 6.30 with uh, Lady Pogue and uh, has been doing something called Your Faith, Money, and Business. Been on Facebook Live, Zoom, amen. She's been interviewing uh, some very influential people, best-selling authors and all of those other things, okay? So she's going to downgrade this week and interview me. And so she's going to downgrade this week and interview me uh, beginning at 6.30. be on Facebook Live. It'll be on Zoom. Amen. And I think I'm the last one. Amen. So, uh, so we'll pray for that. Amen. Uh, so we're looking forward to that this Thursday. Uh, don't forget this Saturday, our Westchester District Buds of Promise Hot Chocolate and Our History uh, celebration will happen on February 19th, 11 a.m. You can check our website for more information. And as I said before, COVID is still real. If you have not get va gotten vaccinated or boosted, you can do that right here at Greater Centennial on Saturday, uh, February 26th, 10 a.m., call for reservations, walk-ins, all those things uh, you can do uh, this week, uh, that day. Amen. Uh, seniors needing help with taxes, you can call Brother David Bradley, extension 106, and he shall certainly help you. Amen. Uh, we are just a couple of weeks away from our Lenten journey. Ash Wednesday is March the 2nd. March the 2nd is Ash Wednesday. And so that does mean uh, that, yes, we will be fasting. Amen. Yes, I'm calling us to fasting. I didn't get there one amen uh, uh, in, in here. Yeah, I know y'all at home was shouting and thanking God, but in here is quiet. You can hear a pin drop about that fasting. I'm just reminding you so you can go ahead and gormandize yourself now uh, before the fast begins. Um, but this Lenten journey, I want it to be different. I want us to really be drawn closer to God that we may grow stronger, go deeper, and reach higher. And so that means we need to add some more components to our Lenten journey. So this year we'll be adding uh, meditation, prayer, devotion, wellness. All of that will be part of our Lenten journey. I'm going to ask each of you to join me each night uh, beginning March the 7th, Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. so that we can go through this Lenten journey together. Amen. And so we'll be on Zoom every night, prayer. We'll talk about each one of these components. Uh, and so we'll be able to do that. So mark your calendars as we get closer to Ash Wednesday. Uh, we will have the imposition of the ashes on Ash Wednesday, March the 2nd. Uh, we won't have a service. We still want to be safe as possible. But we'll do the imposition of the ashes beginning at 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. We'll do it right here in the sanctuary. Uh, please wear your mask. Please wear your mask if you don't feel well stay home we'll get your ashes later amen uh, but we want to make sure that everybody stays safe so you can come on ash wednesday march the second i can't believe i'm talking about march already uh, but march the second uh, we are going to celebrate and also i want to take a moment of pastoral privilege and wish sister barbara williams a very happy birthday the other day she joined the octogenarian club amen and so we're just so grateful uh, to sister barbara williams if you're watching ma'am happy 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 birthday to you and may god bless you with many many more amen amen <clears throat> um our black history figure for this morning is amanda berry smith <clears throat> Amanda Berry Smith was born January 23rd, 1837 in Long Green, Maryland. Her father, Samuel Berry, and her mother, Miriam Matthews, were both slaves. Sometime before 1850, Berry was able to purchase his family's freedom and move them to a farm in York County, Pennsylvania. The oldest of 13 children, Amanda Berry Smith, had a very little formal education. It was mainly homeschooled and self-taught, gleaning information from the many people who passed through her family's home in its capacity as part of the Underground Railroad. During a three-month term at a predominantly white school, she was recognized for her impressive vocabulary and beautiful singing voice. Smith began to sing, re sing regularly at area churches and even to preach from the pulpit on occasion. At age 17, she married Calvin Devine, and they moved to New York City, where she worked as a domestic servant, bore two children, though one died in infancy. The marriage lasted until 1863, when Devine was killed in battle during the Civil War. 
Smith soon remarried a coachman and a church deacon named James Smith and moved with him to Philadelphia. On arrival, she joined the African Methodist Episcopal Church, where her husband planned to pursue ministry. But in 1868, at the age of 31, she had an experience during a sermon that she interpreted as a call to preach. And when her husband died the following year and all three of her children succumbed to illness and died as well, she devoted her entire life to religion. By 1870, the ministry was Smith's full-time vocation, and she soon became known all the way from Maine to Tennessee. In 1875, Smith became the charter member of the Women's Christian Temperance Union and was one of the few black women to gain notoriety among its members. She also became associated with the Colored Women's Club, a progressive organization that addressed issues of the importance of African-American women. Smith traveled to England in 1878, and although she was not ordained as a minister in any official capacity, she became the first black woman to work internationally as an evangelist. Smith returned to the United States in 1890 and traveled as an itinerant preacher during, uh, before settling near Chicago. In Harvey, Illinois, a suburb founded by the temperance groups south of Chicago, Smith took up the duties of the national representative of the Women's Christian Temperance Union and wrote her life story, an autobiography, the story of the Lord's dealing with Amanda Smith. The Colored Evangelist was published in 1893. Through book sales, donations, and lecturing fees, she began to raise money for a new cause, an orphanage for black children. She founded and distributed a small newspaper called The Helper in order to generate publicity and income for the orphanage and other worthy charities. In 1899, the orphanage opened its doors to homeless African-American girls. The 12-room brick house that served as the orphanage was the first of its kind in Illinois. By 1910, the building housed 33 children, up from the 12 in 1900. Smith was a powerful evangelist and pioneer in helping homeless black children. With passion and determination, she triumphed against race and gender discrimination to become a beloved and well-respected religious leader in the United States and abroad. Our Black History Movement, Amanda Berry Smith.
It's found in the book of Psalm. Psalm 20. In its entirety, verses 1 through 9. Once again, the word of the Lord reads, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desires and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the king, and may he answer us when we call. Father, thank you once again for this incredible opportunity to stand behind this which is sacred. Thank you for reminding me that you are pleased with the foolishness of preaching. So God, I pray that in the name of Jesus that somebody today might be healed, delivered, saved, set free simply because of your word today. Use me as an instrument of your peace have me to decrease and have your spirit increase in me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my God, my strength, my rock, and my redeemer. For the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord, our God. I want to use for a subject this morning, the recipe for victory. The recipe for victory. I can imagine that each of us, many of us, have a closely guarded family recipe. It could be Big Mama's peach cobbler, or socket to me cake, or seven up cake, or mac and cheese collard greens, or some other family recipe that is not allowed to be shared outside the family. There are even some recipes that are not allowed to be shared inside the family. Yeah. Not everyone can make Big Mama's recipes, but only a select few have the key to what makes it the dish taste so good. These recipes are important because you must allow, uh, you must follow them to the letter in order to get the same flavor. There's no substituting. There's no adding an ingredient to Big Mama's recipe because when you do, it won't taste the same. And inevitably, somebody will say, this don't taste like Big Mama. Some recipes are not found in a book, nor are they written down, but they are followed by closely watching Big Mama make the dish. You were there in the kitchen when she put in the sugar and the butter. You were there when you, and helped her cut the peaches just right. No, not canned peaches, but fresh peaches. You saw just how much cornstarch went in. Brown sugar, vanilla, and cinnamon went into the dish. Just as we hold on to the long-held family traditions of recipes, I do, I do know that there are some other recipes that were passed down to us that have nothing to do with food. We watch Nana pray. We watch them serve in church. We watch them sing in choirs and serve as ushers on the door. We watch Pop Pop on the trustee board and we watch them lead devotion. What we didn't realize then was they were giving us recipes. A recipe is a set of instructions for a particular dish, but a recipe is also something that will likely lead to a particular outcome. 
So while we were following the recipe in the kitchen, they were also trying to give us the recipe for life so that they knew if we followed God that he would never leave us or forsake us. That's why we had to pray before we sat down and ate. That's why we had to pray before we went to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep it. If I should die before I wake, Lord, my soul, my soul to take. God bless mommy. God bless daddy. God bless nana. Y'all remember the prayer? We had to pray before we did anything. And if you had a nana like my nana when the lightning started happening and the thunder started rolling, shut everything off. Sit down. God is trying to get your attention. You couldn't do anything. And you better not answer the phone. Because God was talking. They were giving us the recipe that we might make it through this life leaning and depending and trusting on God. And whether you want to admit it or not, many of these recipes likely saved our lives. So it's here in the text today that we find that David is giving us a recipe for victory. We find that David is preparing himself to go into battle. David is ready to go into battle, but he knows that he can't go into battle without the recipe for victory. Uh, Can can I help somebody today? Uh, Stop going into fights without the right recipe. You you leaning on on your strength. You're leaning on your ability to articulate the curse words that you find every day and able to tell somebody off. You got to have the right recipe for victory. You, you, you got to understand that sometimes in order to win in life's battles, it's not even about your opponent. It's not even about those that are coming against you. Because you already realize that they that are with us are more than they that are with them. Because as long as I got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I know that the odds are in my favor. So I don't have to worry about my own strength and my own ability, but the recipe calls for something different. David here is getting ready to go into battle. And the first ingredient in the recipe is prayer. That if you want to know, you got to write it down, put it on the back of the index card, save it for your family. This is the recipe for victory. The first ingredient is prayer. Listen to what the people pray before the battle. Listen to how they pray. They said, may, love this prayer, the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. (laughs) I like that. I like that. I like that first component of the ingredient because I don't know about you, but in the day of trouble, I don't need everybody to answer me. I just need the Lord to be able to answer me in the day of trouble. I wish I had somebody that ever had to call on the Lord in the day of your trouble. I wonder, is there anybody in here today that called everybody else, but when you called on the Lord, he answered you. He keeps praying, may the Lord, then may the name of the God of Jacob protect you. I don't know about you, but I need God's protection every day of my life. I I need God to encamp angels all around me. I need God to make sure that his protection is on my life. And sometimes you got to understand that you need to ask God to cover you in some of the situations that you're going into. Because if I'm going into battle, I need God's protection all around me. And there's sometimes when you're going through some things that you you don't even know who or what is coming against you but when you pray and ask God's protection over your life then you can sing all day and all night the angels are watching over me my Lord because I know that the God that I serve is protecting me he's praying he's praying may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble may the name of the God of Jacob protect protect you and now may he send help from the sanctuary That not only God will answer me 
And not only will he protect me, but when I'm praying, I know God will send help. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, is there anybody in here today, anybody watching online that can say, I know he's a helper. I wish I had somebody in here today that can say, I know God helps in the time of my trouble. I know he's a helper when nobody else can help, when nobody else can do. God is there to help me, and he sends help from the sanctuary. And he gives support from Zion. So not only does he help me, <laughs> he supports me. <laughs> that when I'm ready to fall, he's my leaning post. <laughs> that God supports me. And not only does he support me, he props me up. Is, is there anybody here ever had to been propped up by the Lord? Is there anybody here that God has had to prop you up when you were ready to fall? Ready to throw in the towel. But God protected you and he sent help for you and he supported you. And they keep praying. May he remember all your offerings. This is the part of the sermon that it gets quiet for some. And may he regard with favor your burnt offering. That may God remember all of your offerings because sometimes we think our giving, the return on it is more money, but God said no, when you give, it is more than about your financial blessing because God said, I don't need finances to bless you, but you need to make sure that the seeds that you sow are going to produce a harvest that no matter what happens, I know I have resources that God has put in my life because I've already planted planted the seed. I wonder, is there anybody here ever been sick? I'm talking to my givers and God made sure that he blessed you. Is there anybody here that needed a way made and God made a way for you? I'll pray today for you that God would remember all of your offerings, everything that you've given, that God would remember it and your burnt sacrifices. Here David is going to war and the prayer is remember my offerings. Because my offerings <laughs> help me <laughs> to get through what I'm going through. I, I, wish I, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody to say, God, I thank you. And I pray that you remember all of my offerings. They keep praying. May he grant you your heart's desires. And may he fulfill all of your plans. Y'all missing this, y'all missing this key ingredient of prayer. This prayer is being prayed before battle and he says, this is what I need. I want God to grant your heart's desire. <laughs> and may he fulfill every plan that you have. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I thank God that, that every one of my heart's desires, my prayer is that God would fulfill it and that every plan that God has for my life, that it will come to pass for my life. Is there anybody here uh, that can say, God, I need you to hear my heart's desire uh, and I want you to fulfill every plan uh, that you have for my life is there anybody here that has anything on your heart that you need God to do for you is there anybody here that got some plans that God will bless the plans that you have for your life I hear God say I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you to give you a hope and a future God that's my prayer today that you grant this church its heart's desire and you fulfill every plan that we have to give you glory I'm still on the first ingredient that this first ingredient is prayer and it says when you're praying it's not just about asking but it's also about thanking and shouting may we shout for joy over your salvation in the name of our God set up banners and may he fulfill all your petitions we got to learn that when we come to prayer that our prayer is not just gimme 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 God gimme 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 God can I have 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 but sometimes in prayer we need to say, God, thank you. God, glory. Hallelujah. 
thank you for all you've done for me. As I look back over my life, God, I want to thank you for how you kept me. Thank you for how you're blessing me. Is there anybody here that can pray God thank you that even today I'm not asking you for anything. Yes, I'm sick in my body, but I'm saying thank you. Yes, my money's funny, but I'm saying thank you. My change is strange, but I'm saying thank you. Yes, I don't know how I'm going to make it, but my thing is thank you. Sometimes in prayer, we need to tell God thank you. Don't know how my family's going to make it, but God, I say thank you. Is there anybody here that can just pray thank you? Thank you, God, for how good you've been to me. So sometimes I, the ingredients of prayer doesn't just take on the asking, but it takes on the thanking and the hearing and the listening. But I got another ingredient you need to add in for victory. The second ingredient is confidence. You got to have some confidence. The Bible says you can come boldly before his throne of grace. Uh, if you have no confidence, uh, then you don't need to pray. Uh, because sometimes you got to be so bold in prayer uh, that the devil gets nervous that you talking like that. <laughs> You, you, you got to have some confidence uh, when you come to God in prayer. And you got to come to God like it's already done. You, 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 got, you, got to, you got to come to God like God if I'm asking you for it I already know you have the ability to do it and because I'm your child your favorite child I know that thing is already done I wish I had somebody in here today that can say I got confidence when I pray that when I pray I expect an answer when I pray I know God is going to do something it may not work out the way I thought it was going to work out but I'm so confident about my prayer I know it's going to work out. I wish I had about 10 of y'all watching online that can say, Pastor, I'm with you. I just believe that if I ask God for it, he's going to make it happen for me. And so you say, well, I don't see that in the text. I'm right there. I'm in verse number six that David and the people had confidence when he said, now I know. He didn't say, I think. He said, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed and he'll answer from his holy heaven and with his saving right hand. I wish I had somebody in here today that can say, I know that the Lord will save me. I know that when I pray that God will show up. It takes some, it takes some confidence to be able to say, I know God is going to show up. And I know not only do I know he's going to show up, but I know he's going to answer me. See, it's one thing if you get me fighting up here. It's different if you get me on my knees. As long as I'm gapped up here, the enemy has a chance to win. But if I get on my knees, everybody's in trouble. Because what I know is that God answers me when I pray. And he'll send an answer from heaven down to glory to make sure that you and I are taken care of. Do I have any bold Christians in here that can say, I've asked God for some crazy stuff. I've asked God for some things that seemed impossible. I asked God for some things that I couldn't do myself, but I asked him because I was confident that I could ask because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or even think. Is there anybody here that has confidence that the God that you serve is able if you go have victory you need prayer and you need some confidence that God will do what you're asking him to do is there anybody here that can say God is a prayer answer
trigger and I know it right well I know for myself that he hears me and he answers me when I pray it may not happen today it may not happen tomorrow it may not happen next week but it's gonna happen is there anybody here that can say I'm waiting but it's gonna happen I'm being patient but it's gonna happen how do you know pastor because those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up on wings of eagles they'll run and not get weary they'll walk and not faint I'm confident that God will show up that God will answer me God will deliver God will won't he do it won't he won't he won't he do it won't he do it do I have any confidence saint that said I know right well for myself that God will do it So if you want victory, if you want victory, first thing you got to do is you got to mix in some prayer. And after you get some prayer, you got to throw in a dash of confidence. Well, there's one more ingredient for your victory. What is it, Pastor? You need about a mustard seed worth of trust. Uh, third ingredient, you got to have trust because you can't have victory without trust or faith in God. Because when you trust outside of that, it'll fail you every time. I'm sorry, those of you that are watching. Every time. It, 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 it'll fail you each time. Anything outside of God's dichotomy, it's going to fail. Have you ever waited for somebody to come pick you up? And some of y'all still waiting? Have you ever had somebody tell you, I'll be there in five minutes? And 20 minutes later, how about this? You have anybody ever tell you, I'll call you right back? And you still waiting for them to call you right back? And then you call them back and you say, I thought you were going to call me right back. So many times when you trust outside of the dynamic of who God is, It'll fail you every time. That's why David says, uh, some trust in chariots. <laughs> and some trust in horses. <laughs> but we, <laughs> you and I, uh, we're going to trust uh, in the name uh, of the Lord our God. Uh, let, let, let me explain, let me explain, let me explain the text. Let me explain the text for those of you who don't like my broken English. Uh, uh, let me explain the text. Here's the text. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, Paul's. Uh, that means that there are many times when they're going out to battle, it's who had the biggest chariots, the most horses that believed that they would get the victory because they had quality, quantity, but all the time they didn't have quality. And so some trusted in their chariots and others trusted on their horses, but I'm not trusting this morning in any of that. Some trust in their jobs. Some trust in their bank accounts. Some trust in their connections. But this morning, I'm coming to declare that our trust is in the name of the Lord my God because that name is above every name. There's power. 
power in that name. There's healing in that name. I wonder, is there anybody here that can say all of my trust is in the Lord? I trust him when I can't trace him. I trust him when I don't understand what he's up to. But all of my trust is in God. I trust him in the midnight hour. I trust him when I'm sick in my body. Is there anybody here today that can say, Pastor, I trust God even when my faith is low I still trust that God will make a way out of no way I trust him to be my bridge over troubled waters I trust him to be bread when I'm hungry and water when I'm thirsty I trust him to be my battle axe in the time of war I trust him to be with me both day and night some trust in chariots and some trust in horses but I trust in the name of the Lord my God what's his name Jehovah what's his name Jehovah Jireh my provider what's his name Jehovah Rapha he's my healer what's his name Jehovah Shalom he's my peace what's his name Lily in the valley what's his name Friday morning star what's his name wonderful what's his name counselor what's his name mighty God what's his name prince of peace what's his name everlasting father what's his name Elohim what's his name El Shaddai what's his name more than enough I'm gonna trust in the name of the Lord my God and because of my prayer and because I mixed in confidence and because I sprinkled in trust I know I will have the victory is there anybody here that can say thank you pastor for the recipe for my victory Some can say, well, I don't see how you mix all that together and get victory. I'm glad you don't. I'm going to help you right here and we got to go. Keep reading. Verse number eight says, they shall collapse and fall. They shall. But those mm -hmm, that follow the recipe, it says... Uh, that while they collapse and fall, we shall rise and stand upright. Good morning, Greater Centennial. So glad you stopped by on Super Bowl Sunday. I don't know who is going to win the game, but what I know is that I've already got my recipe for victory together, and I'm going to keep trusting, keep praying, have confidence and boldness to tell God what I need and what I want. I came to tell somebody, stop walking around defeated. Stop walking around like you can't make it. All you got to do is mix these ingredients together in your life and you will have victory. I heard the songwriter say victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind, cause victory today is mine. Is there 
there anybody here that can say victory is mine victory today is mine tell satan to get me behind cause victory today is mine i'm trying to let it go but victory is in my view victory is in my future victory is in my dna victory is all around me victory is mine i'm claiming it declaring it shouting it thanking god for it is there anybody here that can shout victory is mine victory is mine victory is mine claim it claim it declare it open your mouth and say it's mine it's mine today it's mine joy is mine happiness it's mine peace it's mine Cause God gave it to me The recipe The recipe For victory Now This is not one of them family secret recipes You share this one Share it everywhere you go. Because you know somebody who needs victory in their life. Maybe there's somebody here, somebody worshiping with us in the virtual world. Uh, you saying, Pastor, I want victory. I've been defeated so much that I don't even know if I know what victory looks like. Can I tell you? You can have victory. First thing you got to do is you got to have the main ingredient. The main ingredient is Jesus Christ. Without that, none of the other things work because you can't pray unless you pray through Jesus to the Father. You can't pray unless you pray in that name. And then you can add all the other ingredients so you can have victory. Here's the wonderful thing about accepting Christ. He don't care where you are right now. Crack house, on the corner, drunk, whatever. He said, I'll take you just as you are. So you can have victory over those things that think they have hold on you. And all you have to do is pray this prayer with me. Father, I admit I've messed up, fallen short made mistakes and I've sinned so today I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins cleanse me of all unrighteousness and today I confess the Lord Jesus as my personal savior I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead because of my confession and because of my belief I'm now saved thank you God for saving me in Jesus name amen 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 I celebrate with you you just gave your life to Christ I celebrate with you can I tell you that everything tomorrow won't be perfect because you gave your life to Christ but you'll have victory because you gave your life to Christ um, one of the things I didn't tell you about the scripture, David still had to go to war. He still had to go to battle, but he still got the victory. And just because you give your life to Christ don't mean there won't be a battle, but it does mean you will win the battle. You will overcome and you can have victory if you just follow the recipe. Amen. Come on, one time. Victory!
Victory. Victory. opportunity to give today there's many ways you can give here at Greater Centennial you can mail your gift to 114 West 4th Street Mount Vernon New York 10550 114 West 4th Street Mount Vernon New York 10550 you can text your gift to 914-940-4483 914-940-4483 or uh, you can cash up your gift dollar sign GCLUV GC L U V, or you can simply go to our website www.greatercentennial.org and there are many ways to give right there on our website however you give my prayer is that you will give so that when you're going through the battle that you can say God remember my offering and look with favor on my generosity yeah and watch how God shows up amen amen so thank you in advance for your giving thank you for being a blessing don't forget tomorrow, starting at 10 o'clock, we have our COVID PPE kits that have uh, the two home test kits, the sanitizer, the mask. We want you to be safe. We want you to be able to get tested if you need to be, get vaccinated on the 26th. Uh, so there's so much going on uh, that you can be a blessing and make sure that you're covered. Amen. Uh, before I go, let me say to everybody, happy Valentine's Day on tomorrow. I 
pray I shout out my Valentine Lady Poe God bless you happy Valentine's Day to you and to all of you I pray that God would bless you here it is and give you all the love you deserve and more all right so I pray that God just fills your day and that he don't just do it tomorrow because some of us are one day lovers but that God would extend his love for us daily. Amen. 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 Um, those of you that are watching online, some folk in the sanctuary have some issues. They, they heard what I said and they're chuckling behind me and on the side uh, because they didn't get it like you did. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lord, touch them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Now may the Lord bless you. <laughs> now may the Lord keep you. Now may the Lord cause his face to shine and to smile upon each and every one of us. May the Lord grant to us his grace, his mercy, his peace, his love, protection, both now and forevermore. Let the church say seated and follow the directions of our ushers please those of you online have a blessed day and enjoy super bowl sunday let's go rams for tuning in to the Greater Worship Experience. May you and your families be blessed. We'll see you next week.